I can't tell you how badly I want to read Tar on Tar. I assume that that book is about 900 pages <laughs> long. I've written it. I've read it. <laughs> I've read it. <laughs> yeah, you've lived it. You've lived it. I'm wondering if your opinion of Lydia changed at all from the the moment you started reading the script to the last day that you played her, and if it did, how? I think it changed minute by by minute. But in a way, um, I don't think we have opinions about ourselves. Mm. We're always the heroes or the heroines of our own narratives, aren't we? We always think we're misunderstood, that our actions are noble, that we're good people. And I think Lydia thinks that she's in the pursuit of excellence. She's got a very powerful inner critic. And I think... We, I think great artists, people who achieve great things in society are very robust and restless and exacting on themselves. And I think the interesting thing I got to grapple with was how do you push the people that you're working with creatively beyond their comfort zone but and be as kind of exacting on them but do it respectfully, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that the film doesn't allow an easy judgment of, of, of any of the characters. It was really important to me as I filmed it um, and even from the first reading I thought the world was so complicated the world is as complicated as the character is and it was really important to me that I never made a judgment on her because otherwise it's telling the audience what to think and because it's a lot about time and and misspent time and institutional power there's so few places where one can have a nuanced discussion about those things and it was really important to Todd and to all of us that, that we allow the audience to have that nuance. So my judgment, my opinion was utterly irrelevant. Very interesting. Um, Ms. Oz, I'm curious, how do you feel about the fact that people are leaving this movie and Googling um, for more information about these characters as if they were real people? Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Great. I've only heard about it I, it, because I'm not so much on social media, I must admit. <laughs> But I hear about it from friends, and I'm like, really? That's something? They have big articles about Lydia Tarr doing her next concert <laughs> and, and all of this. I I think it's fabulous. You know, mm. I love it. I love it. Because it means it, it, it uh, you know, it evokes fantasy. It's like you want them in your life, you know, so it's great. I can't tell you how badly I want to read Tar on Tar. I assume that that book is about 900 pages <laughs> long. I've written it. I've written it. <laughs> I've read it. <laughs> I've read it. <laughs> yeah, you've lived it. You've lived it. Miss Blanchett, there's this unforgettable moment where uh, Lydia goes home and she has these v VCR tapes of, of conductors that inspired her uh, when she was younger. And I'm just curious uh, if you had VHS tapes of performances uh, from actors or actresses that you adored and and if you uh if so which one did you wear out do you think gosh i, I think a, a film that really changed my life um was watching jane fonda in they shoot horses don't they and watching her in clute and also the life that she has lived i mean she has had so many lives if i could i so i constantly refer to her and and also Liv Ullman. and i suppose the filmmaker that i'd constantly referred two would be Krzysztof Kislowski. So his work is a constant, on constant rotation. Um, but yeah, I found that scene, it, it was a real surprise actually when, when, when it happened. And it comes quite late in the piece, you know, when, when the audience has decided they felt whatever they felt about Lydia and then you realise that, you know, she's a human being and makes mistakes and has regrets and feels longing and yearning like like everybody you know it was a it was a very well positioned sort of moment i think i'm just curious if you could compare the relationship between um a musician and conductor uh, with actor and director is it even a fair comparison well there are some similarities i guess uh, because you're working on an interpretation you know, but I, I do have the feeling, especially in, in this work with, with someone like Todd, that it was very much also in his interest to see what we're going to do with it, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So the freedom of interpretation was was very much there. And in the whole body of an orchestra, that is 
maybe probably what's difficult about it, but also the, the incredible thing that they do and the beauty that they do, you have to submerge, you know. You, you can, if you do chamber music and, and so on, then you can uh, be more like an actor maybe and interpret it the way you see things a bit more. But there you just, you go, I mean, it's a similarity. I love the vision of Todd and I want to, play towards that vision that the director has mm -hmm. but how we get there is very much in the open and maybe surprisingly we find other things along the way that even he didn't expect you know so but good. that i think is a bit different to to uh, the relationship between a conductor who has a certain sound in mind and the whole body of an orchestra is really trying everything to, to create that that was the shocking thing to me about our rehearsal process. I was thinking, God, we've got so little time to rehearse with the orchestra and, and Nina has to play the violin and I've got to conduct them. But that is that is life imitating art. They Often a guest conductor will come in, they will have eight hours, if they're lucky, to play this, symph rehearse this symphonic work and then they, and to put their interpretation on it and try and elicit uh, a particular sound from an orchestra, whereas we had eight weeks. So we chip away at it a little bit at a time. Yeah.